There have been countless artists who have left their mark on the comic book medium in their own ways, but there's only one artist who gets to be called the king of comics. That man is Jack Kirby, the legend who created or co-created basically everyone. As in... Here's his story in two minutes, which isn't nearly enough time, but this is called Two Minute Bio, so... Kirby was born Jacob Kurtzberg on August 20, 1917 in Manhattan's Lower East Side to two Austrian immigrants. His dad reportedly challenged a German aristocrat to a duel, which is why they needed to flee. Working as a paperboy introduced him to comic strips, which helped inspire him to become a writer and artist. He taught himself to draw using discarded newspapers as sketchbooks. Jack dropped out of his high school to help his family, but he got his first paying art gig when he drew cartoons on vendor pushcarts. In 1935, he got a gig working on Popeye cartoons, but he hated the factory-like process, so he left. With the superhero boom following Superman's debut in Action Comics number one, Kirby got into the world of comic book art. His first superhero work was on the original Blue Beetle for Fox Future Syndicate, which is where he met and befriended a man named Joe Simon. The pair worked on a number of heroes together, but the most notable came in March 1941 with the publication of Captain America Comics number one. Three years later, the newly married Kirby was drafted into the war. By the time the war was over, superhero comics were on the decline. Kirby began working on crime, horror, and romance comics, the latter of which he found sales success with his title, Young Romance. After a call from writer Stan Lee, Kirby began working on Atlas Comics, which would soon be renamed Marvel. When DC published the Justice League book in 1961, Marvel challenged Kirby and Lee to come up with their own super team. The Fantastic Four was born. Kirby usually cranked out an issue a week, which he'd draw from a very rough outline that Lee wrote, and Lee would then come back in and write the dialogue. This process, known as the Marvel Method, was responsible for allowing Kirby to cut loose creatively, famously leading to the creation of the Silver Surfer, independent of Stan's outline, but it also led to dispute over who created the characters and how they should be compensated. After Marvel was sold to new corporate owners who refused to cut Kirby a better deal or acknowledge his contributions, he left. Good for him. Kirby ended up working at DC where he drew the book Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. It was there he began laying the groundwork for characters that would reshape the DC universe forever, the fourth world. Starting in 1971, Kirby wrote and drew stories featuring the warring worlds of Apocalypse and New Genesis and its residents, Darkseid, Mr. Miracle, Orion, Big Barda, and others. The unique trippy visual style of the stories made a lasting impression on generations of artists to come. Financial troubles at DC led to those titles being cancelled, and Kirby eventually returned to Marvel for a stint before leaving to work on animation in the early 1980s, most notably designing and producing Thundar the Barbarian. However, he couldn't stay away from comics. He returned to DC and his fourth world characters, who had recently found success in toys and cartoons. The new brass at DC even gave Kirby something he'd never been given before, a royalty check. After an intense legal debate, he even managed to get thousands of pages of his original art back from Marvel in 1987. Jack Kirby passed away of heart failure in February of 1996. The creative shockwaves he sent across the world can still be felt even now, 100 years after his birth. I mean, hell, the guy's characters basically defined all the Marvel movies of the last decade. Yeah, I told you it wasn't going to happen in two minutes. There's a lot there. But what is some of your favorite Kirby work? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more.